Hi Future Noirs, my name is Gordon. I know it has been a while since I posted my last video. I literally made this video after having the interviewing and advising exam this morning. But anyway, I'm not gonna talk about that right now. I know the application season is coming and right now I'm pretty sure most of you guys are working on your application forms trying to send out as many good applications as possible. So I think it's just the best timing for you, for me to actually make a video on this topic and to maybe give some of the tips. First tip is you need to carefully select six to 10 firms that you're really interested in based on a number of factors. People usually say quantity is not as important as quality, but given that you actually have the time and ability to do so, it's always good for you to submit more high quality applications because that means you actually suit your shot and actually take a chance. You never know which firm is going to accept you or progress you to the next stage. So it's always good to submit more high quality applications. But how can you actually choose which firm you should apply to? Uh, there are a number of factors. I think the first factor is the number of places available or the size of the training intake. Uh, because when you look at some firms, they can be really good firms, but they just offer maybe two to six training contracts every year, more difficult for you to firstly obtain a VAT scheme in the first place or secondly to even convert that VAT scheme into a training contract. I think it's just more difficult in those law firms. However, when you look at bigger law firms, say firms with a larger intake of trainees, those firms firstly, they will be able to offer more places for you and secondly, they usually have the ability to pay attention to the diversity of the candidate or they value that much more. That's why for me as an international candidate or for people who are from more diverse background or doing law and law degree in the first place, it always makes sense for them to actually apply to law firms uh, with a bigger presence or bigger intake of trainees. The second factor is whether you have ever interact with anyone at the law firm before, especially if you attended any open days or career events, you should definitely mention that in the application and actually those should be the firms that you first consider because you have an advantage you already interact with them you can actually make a tailored application mentioning your international conversation with them I think that's very important especially when all other candidates none of you has done a vacation scheme how can they actually judge which candidate is better or which candidate has done more research Everyone can find information online nowadays, so those information are not decisive. The information that they couldn't find is the conversation you have with the people there. Pick firms whose people you actually interacted with before will be a very important factor. And the third factor should be any particular aspect of the firm that really attracts you. I think this is a pretty personal decision. That could be a diversity initiative you came across before, any particular deals or transaction you came across before, or just the atmosphere, the vibe of the firm that you experience when attending the events, you should identify the particular areas that interest you. So the final factor is more for international candidates like me. If you are an international student, just remember to check whether the firm actually sponsors visa. Send an email to the grad recruit team uh, to ask if they do so, or in most circumstances, if you are applying to a global law firm, more often than not, they will sponsor you. So I wouldn't worry that much about it. So it also kind of reinforces the point I mentioned before about selecting firms with a larger size of in, uh, training intake because they will be willing and able to actually sponsor you due to their business needs, due to their you know, larger number of employees, etc. So my second tip on training contract or VAT scheme application is to actually create a timeline for all the deadlines. Because I am a student too, I know how hectic things can become when you need to attend lectures, do assignments, mock exams, etc. When all those things come in, you just tend to procrastinate and you tend to ignore some deadlines that you set for yourself. So I think the best approach is to actually have all the deadlines of your dream firms list in a calendar so that you can refer to them, make small goals for you each day, rather than try to finish an application form in a day. For example, if you have this, uh, today's Monday, and you have you set for yourself that that is like on Friday, then you should definitely work maybe two hours per day, because often you just ignore the mistakes you make when the first time you write it. So later on when you review it, you will figure out some more mistakes or things that you can actually add to perfect that application. Remember to submit your application two weeks or at least one week in advance. 
because some firms actually recruit on a rolling basis. I experienced in the past that I submit application to a firm, but at that time they already reviewed application and asked people for interviews. At the end, they actually didn't select me because they already picked all the fast schemers. You don't want something like that happen when you pour your energy and tears on one application. So remember to submit early, as early as possible, but ideally two weeks before. And the third tip on your uh, application is to prepare a killer answer for questions like why law, why commercial solicitors, uh, etc. I think you can definitely make a perfect answer for those two questions and then reuse it again and again. Try to ask yourself several types of questions in order to uh, make a good answer. Have you ever considered other career paths in the past? For example, many of my uh, draft application I mentioned that in the past, I wanted to become a barrister. I did manipulate pledge at Free Chambers. I also worked as a research assistant. I was thinking maybe, you know, but academia is the route for me. However, later on, after I did my master's degree, I realized that commercial law is the thing that I might find more exciting because I worked on M&A deals in my master's degree. What was the past experience you had that kind of lead you to where you are today. It could be just a research project, it could be a work experience at a firm. You keep exploring other options. I think that's probably the attitude uh, the recruitment, the recruiter want to see as well because they want someone who carefully consider their career path. Also, if some of you guys are interested, I can also share a short piece of my application. How did I answer the question about like why commercial law, why commercial solicitor? Comment down below if you want to have a look. Uh, we'll try to make it available if like enough people are asking for that. Fourth tip on your application is think carefully whether fast scheme or training contract is your option. Because some people they are struggling whether they should apply directly for training contract or apply for fast scheme. I would say general rule. It is very difficult for you to apply directly for a training contract unless you satisfy uh, the following requirements. I think the first category of people is uh, you know, practitioners in other jurisdictions, especially if you are from a common law jurisdictions, uh, particularly Australia, Canada, uh, New Zealand, then it will be easier for you to apply directly for a training contract because you can already showcase your work ability which other candidates uh, do not have. A second category will be people like me, I would say, have more diverse work experiences. I didn't have that many work experience in the UK, so I spent a year in the UK working on different paralegal projects, etc., to showcase my commitment to this country and also to showcase uh, my ability to work here. Uh, so a year later, when I applied, it just makes sense and they couldn't really question me because at first, um, uh, several law firms actually asked me, you never even work in the UK as a paralegal. You really need to have some work experience in the UK in order to apply directly for training contract. The firm is like making a gamble, to be honest. They don't know whether you're good enough. They just judge it based on your CV. So in other cases, I say it will be easier for you to apply for a VAC scheme, especially if you're not an international candidate with visa issue regarding VAC scheme or you are just a student, then I think it just makes sense for you to go through that process. Even though a fresh graduate without any work experience, I think it's not advisable for you to go for a direct TC. Also, it's a better way for you to ass assess whether you are compatible with the firm. My fifth tip for your application is really focus on quality. Because at the end of the day, you just need one application to be successful, to be honest. Uh, particularly, I think you need to spend around 7 to 10 hours per application, depending on whether you are also a professionalist. For me, I actually spend even more time because I'm, I think I'm kind of a professionalist in some sense that I always can find something to improve in my application. I, next day I read it, I will feel like, oh, that was actually bad. Like, why did I write it? I mean, 7 to 10 hours will be a good starting point. Also, remember to mention the kind of deal the firm has been working on. Uh, maybe diversity initiative, the practice area strength, um, also uh, your interaction with the people there. All those points you should uh, basically cover in the cover letters or in your answers to those questions. And so it's good to take every question seriously. My sixth, sixth tip uh, for application is that 
You should reveal your part. It's very annoying because always the tube is like next to my place, so that it's always passing by and the light is blocked. So bear with me. If you have a successful application in the past, I think it's safe for you to just reuse those work experience sessions and also why law, why commercial solicitors session as well because it was a successful application. And usually, it means that the way you draft your answers makes sense and is acceptable. That's why your application gets progressed to the other stage so that there is no some material uh, irregularity or like uh, inappropriateness in your drafting of your application form. So in that case, you can always reuse those parts of an application and focus more on maybe the researching part. So my seventh tip is that try to remember or figure out all the questions they asked you in the past and put it into a question bank. In the past, I actually sent a question bank to a lot of aspiring solicitors because I think it's always good for them to have a list of questions to prepare and I list about 50 questions based on my past interviews or assessment centers and they find them actually pretty useful so if you want a copy of that also like drop your comment down below. You know, I think it's always good for you to learn from your mistakes in the past as well. Starting from today, every interview you attend, after that interview, no matter you perform so badly or so well, just drop down all the questions they ask you. I think it's always good to gather them together so that you have a master document to look at and that will help you massively in your future interviews, trust me. Uh, eighth tip for your application is ask a friend to help you with your with a mock interview. Given that you already have the list of questions, either I gave it to you or you recorded all the questions people asked you in your past uh, failed interviews. More often than not, they're definitely gonna ask some of those questions. So prepare a very concise and accurate answer for each and every question. Maybe find a friend, another aspiring lawyer you know, just help each other out. Literally like maybe weeks before my interviews, I asked uh, my friend who got training contract and we just sat down and he asked me a question and I tried to answer it and he pointed out my mistakes and how I could do better. Another tip I wanna give you is about the work experience session. Like, like the why law or why commercial solicitor types of question. This question is also something you can just prepare it uh, to, your, to your profession. And then you can reuse this session most of the time, I would say. Because for experience session is kind of tricky part. Some people may ask whether they should put four experiences or like 10 experiences. There were times when I actually put four experiences and I got progress to another stage. But there were times I mentioned like, 13 work experiences, but I still, I still couldn't get it. So I think it's really flexible. Look for a few things. Firstly, whether the work experience are repetitive. If you are mentioning so many kinds of experiences, showcasing the same sets of skill, or you, you learn the same things through these experiences, it's a bit pointless for you to keep mentioning the same things. In that case, I would say uh, less is better. However, if you have really diverse work experiences in different domains, different fields, different skills, mention uh, as many of them as possible you need to know the purpose of putting that work experience. I actually got a tip from one of the uh, trainee solicitors in the past telling me that just sit down and write a mind map uh, outlining all the experiences you had in the past and think carefully what kind of skills and lessons you learn from each and every one of them. Know why you actually need to put that particular work experience here. Sometimes they may, sometimes they may tell you that uh, the upper limit is like maybe 300 words. But I think it's not necessarily for you to actually write up to 300 words in order to fulfill that work count. It just doesn't make sense to me. If you can write something concisely within 100 words, why the like? Why would you actually write 300 words for that? Also, don't ignore non-legal work experiences because those are the ones that showcase your soft skills way more. Because legal work experiences, you may learn about the drafting, the research on this particular of a law. I mean, those are the skills you can learn you know, from being a law student as well. Working in a cafeteria, restaurants, you learn dealing with clients, 
uh, ability to communicate with people, things like that. Those are very helpful skills as well. Just pay attention to those key points when drafting your work experience session. Here is the 10th tips. I, I just realized I actually don't have that many tips to give, so that it just sounds better when I mention 10 tips for you know training contract application. Believe in yourself. I think that's probably the most important tips though, like out of all I just mentioned, because there were times that you were just so close to getting that offer, but your own confidence actually affects your performance or the fact that you convince yourself that you don't belong to a particular firm or you think that you wouldn't be able to achieve that goal actually is the only thing hindering you from achieving that goal. I hope that those 10 tips are helpful and let me know if you think so. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.